I'm going to start with the oils first. Um, oils are the ma majority of your soap and I tend to just purchase oils when they come on sale. Olive oil especially when it goes on sale because it gets to be expensive. But olive oil helps to make a nice hard, boil, hard bar. Excuse me. Um, canola oil it, or vegetable oil tends to be the one that I use the most. And then I use the coconut or palm oils to make the bar hard and they also are known for lather. I believe in the Majestic Mountain Sage website they tell you to use 30% on those. And if I pan down a little bit, what you see there I don't use as much because of the technique that I use. Those are beeswax pellets. Pellets are easier to melt, but beeswax is a hard, hard wax and it's hard to melt. Um, from what I've been told, beeswax gives nice qualities to your soap also. I'm going to go ahead and move over here because this is an optional thing here. This is definitely not something that you need to start with and that is colorant. And you have to decide whether you want water-based or oil-based colorants. And as you can see I've got three different ones there. The only thing with colorants is make sure that you have something that you can um, mix it in. And you see I've got a stir and uh, dropper so I can drop it in over and um, there's some books right there. I did not buy too many books when I started doing the soaps. I got them later on because most of the information I found was easy to find on the website. And right there, the old Red Devil lie, that's what I used to be able to go into the store and buy, but since 9-11 they no longer offer that. Uh, you have to order it online and my suggestion is to find um, a soap making company that is within your state. It'll save you money and you won't have to worry about hazard, ha uh, what is it, hazmat hazard chemical transportation. And something that I always like to include and it's always a funny thing when you add it and that is uh, fragrances. I've got three different ones there and since that's what I have here that I grabbed, we're going to use one of those three. I've moved on to what I'm going to put my soap in, molds. I've got wooden molds. Uh, uh, that one is supposed to be one that I don't have to line. I've got different shaped molds. Now I will tell you on those molds you have to be careful because sometimes they're not good for cold process or CP soap. They're best for the melt and pours but they can be tried and when you make slabs such as these two you may want to once you slice them stamp them so that's just a soap mold. As you can see I've had it for a while and I've never used it. Now this is my newest addition. It's supposed to be a soap cutter and it's metal. I usually do have um, like a metal chopper to slice my soaps but I wanted to try that out and see what it is or how it works and see what I've got. Now I'm going to pan up just a little bit because I want you to pay attention to that. That is what we're going to use for our mold today. That's a medium sized priority mailing box because the point I wanted to make today is you do not have to go out and buy expensive molds or make expensive molds. You can go ahead and use boxes that are close to the size or width of the soap that you want to make. So we're going to cut that up. Now all soaps need to be lined. I don't use wax paper. I use parchment paper or the paper that has uh, or the uh, type that has paper on one side, wax on the other, and the wax side or the shiny side is always up in my soap molds. They hold well. The next I things I want to focus on is what I'm going to make the soap in. I try to get a big container and um, what I start with was I had a five gallon ice cream tub that's big enough to hold my soap without me worrying about it pouring over and it's thick enough that it can handle the heat and that's towards the end. This is the very beginning thing. You need some kind of a scale. This one is an old postal scale that I actually got for free. I just keep my eyes open. Somebody didn't want it and they were putting it out and I got it. Um, I have picked up postal scales for five dollars at soap meets. 
um, and you can find something on eBay or in the store. Digital is really nice, but um, you can also use the spring scales. You want it to be as good a quality as you can afford, and you want to make sure you measure everything on it because at least that way it's, it's relative. Okay, um, we're now going to look at the rest of my materials, and some of these are necessary, some are not. I'm going to start in the back and span my way. That pitcher is what I use for my water and my lye mixture, um, and that's all that I use it for. I've got additional containers in case I want to do something like color my soap. I can pour some of the soap once it's at trace into those, add the colorants, and then I can pour it into the mold. The most important thing I think is right there. That is your soap recipe, and that's just a basic soap recipe I put together off of Majestic Mountain Sage. As I pan down, the first thing to your right is a stick blender. It's not necessary, but it definitely speeds that process up. The stir and the spatula are, or spoon I should say, and spatula are all that you need, especially if you're starting out. Just make sure that you get something that doesn't have uh, metal and can withstand temperatures, high temperatures. I've got there a dropper in case I want to drop instead of pouring a larger quantity of uh, uh, fragrance oil. I've got some spatulas so I can scoop out colorants or other things. And I've got two different types. I usually use, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what they are, I just said they're two different types. I've got a thermometer. Um, the thermometer was something I used at the beginning to make sure that my oils and my lye water were of the same temperature. I don't use them quite as much, but I used to use um, the old glass candy making thermometers and once I use it for soap I use it for nothing else. To the far left there you see rubber gloves. I generally buy myself a couple of sets so that if something happens I've got them to use while I'm mixing. Remember you're dealing with lye. Again eye contact, uh, goggles, something to cover your eyes in case of splashes. Um, I tend to use the big bulky ones because I wear glasses. I don't wear context, contact lenses when I'm making soap. I don't want to take the chance. 